After receiving a couple of requests um, on how I did the grading on this GoPro footage, I decided to do a tutorial uh, just to show you what I did. And uh, so that's what this is about. Uh, keep in mind, and in, in, I in no way claim to be a, a, a colorist. Uh, I know some great colorists, and those guys and gals are, are, are amazing people. But uh, this is just uh, me kind of showing the results that I uh, was able to achieve and, the, and how I got there. And uh, and hopefully it helps um, somebody out. And, um, you know, if there's anything you see that you like, please comment. If there's anything you see you don't like, you know, something I'm not doing right, please let me know. I'll, I'm always learning and uh always look look forward to be uh, to learning something new so anyway uh, I'm gonna get right to it I'm gonna let the video play first just in case uh, there's folks out there that haven't seen the actual color grading study and then the tutorial on how I did a few of those scenes will come right after so you can skip ahead if you've already seen it Okay, I'm going to start with a scene uh, that I've had a couple of requests within that video because it has, um, it's got a few few different color correction uh, selective track mats in it, and that's this scene. I um, hope everybody can see that. Okay, I'm going to pull up here and turn everything off that I've that I've applied to that clip, and so we'll go through each one. Okay, there's the image raw, uh, right out of the camera first thing I do is over here I apply a fast color corrector and this one's still set in the in the center I don't think I've made any adjustments to it but just in case the white balance is off uh, to, to, to one direction or another whether it's blue or a little cool or warm yellow uh, but that's the first step I do and, and the way you do that in, in Premiere Pro is you click this little dropper tool and get to an area that's pure white and click and it'll make that adjustment for you but uh, so that's the first one like I said I haven't utilized that uh, for the specific clip but I do usually use that to set the overall tone of the image the next thing is a three-way color corrector and that is just for the ground so if I open that up and look at the mask let's back out a little bit now you can see the mask that I have applied to this uh, that's only here on the uh, ground area. There's without it, there's with it. And that's to get a little bit of those dark shadows back in there. Um, and when I'm talking about shadows uh, and tonality, I want to show you, um, I use this guy religiously, uh, the scopes within the application. Whether you're using, uh, you know, Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro or, gosh, I don't know, a DaVinci, um, Sony Vegas, I, I think all of them have some equivalent of this kind of scope system uh, in their application. This is the YC waveform, uh, and this is the this is the first thing you look at really uh, when you when you're checking out your footage. You in, you should trust this more than you trust your own eyes. Um, this will tell you exactly what's going on. Like I said, this is for tonality. Uh, you know, bright and bright your highlights and shadows, brights and darks. Um, Within the scope, if you look here at zero, that's black, 100% black. The image on the scope reads the same from left to right. 
just like over here in the image itself. Uh, 100 is pure white. So you can see here at this part of the image, that's where the sun is. So that's really crushed and blown out. You see that's a big flat line. So there's not, you know, there's not much you can do about that. That's why, again, I set the camera's exposure to negative one. That tends to help with that a little bit. So now, um, <clears throat> what we'll do is I'm going to turn off that real quick and then look. You'll see how the zero, the darkest spots are now lifted a lot more. I want to turn that back on. Boom. That tells me about, that my shadows are, are getting pushed down to that darker uh, range, closer to pure black. So anyway, that is the three-way color on the land only. The next one up is for the sky. That's a fast color corrector. There's the mask for that one. This dotted line here and here, that is the feather around that mask, okay? And that mask feather on this is about, a, what, 177? 177 uh, pixels for that mask feather. That way you get a nice smooth tonal um, feather instead of, you know, a hard edge on the, on the line of that mask. Um, but anyway, if I turn that on, now, now you can see how we're bringing back some of the uh, the detail and, and saturation uh, and information that's in that's in the clouds. Like I was saying earlier, um, I think I was saying earlier that the the problem you run into with with GoPro footage and it's predominant pretty much with every shot is the fact that your skies are always way brighter than your land. So the camera is constantly trying to trying to balance that exposure. And what happens is you get you tend to get skies that are much brighter uh, uh, and, and, and tend to be a little bit more blown out. So you can see before. Oh, let me blow this up a little bit. There's the image before for the sky and then after. So you can see we're starting to get some, we're starting to get some good stuff and detail going on in here and getting a little bit of that tonal range and saturation back. So we've got that one. Now the next color corrector I used is another fast color corrector that concentrates only on this area. Because if you'll look, I had to take a lot of, uh, of kind of uh, yellows out of this image because I didn't want this to be too yellow down here in the ground. Um, but because of that, uh, the yellows and the blues, th th this started to look a little acid green instead of a nice warm you know, sun, sun, sundown kind of uh, color. So I added another mask, and there you can see that mask. Let me back up a little bit. So that mask is here with a with a pretty good feather on it. Also, it's 128 pixels. So that's feathered, and with that mask on, I'll turn the mask off visually. But I'll turn that mask on, and now you can see uh, what that looks like with that on. It's much warmer and rich doesn't have that that acid green kind of color to it I show you before and after and that's only on these areas here okay the next thing this next fast color is for the vignette removal um, GoPros are, can be bad about this but especially when you use filters like I do I use ND filters and CP filters to uh, slow the shutter rate down on the on the camera so I get more natural motion blur with my movement um, but what happens is it, you kind of get a little bit of a vignette going on and that's over here up in here here especially in here on the on the corners of the edges so what I did was I drew a big mask a circular mask and then over here I clicked this, which inverts the mask. So now it's affecting these areas, not this area, this edge. And when I turn this mask on, get the mask out of the way. You can see before, after, before, after. So your edges kind of come back up. It doesn't have that, again, that kind of GoPro vignette edge look to it. The last, let's see, the last thing I did other than sharpening uh, is a three-way color corrector and that is the one that I did here on this little body of water this little pond without it let me turn it off go full screen without it this was pretty man unattractive looking it was just this this, this kind of green mossy green color 
and I wanted it to have this really pretty indigo blue kind of ref, you know, reminiscent of, of, of these colors up here to play off that. So what I did was go in there and select the mask. I used the pen tool over here. Instead of, instead of choosing a, uh, a, an ellipse or a square mask, I used the pen tool. It came over to the image and it works just like Photoshop does with paths or Illustrator when you're drawing a vector shape. Uh, you just start clicking and dragging and you can draw a path around the shape. Now when you've got that path complete, what you do next is you click over here in the effects controls, you click this play button. And that makes this mask active, okay? Meaning it will morph and change as the timeline moves along. So what you do is you've got that active, then you, you scroll up a few frames, and then you'll go into those pixels and you'll move them. You know, you'll take them and you'll move them down along the edge. And you don't have to do this for every single frame, uh, you know, 24 frames in a second. You can just do it, you know, every three seconds or so. And then as you get a few of them, lady, and just kind of scrub and see how that mat, that, that mask falls. A lot of people call this a traveling mat or a traveling mask. Um, but then as you get it, lady, and you can just visually check it to make sure as, as you scrub along the timeline that it follows that uh, like it should. And you can always, like if you look over here in the keyframes for that mat, you see a big gap here. That's where I don't have, like, from that keyframe to this keyframe looks pretty good. But if things are a little off in between keyframes, that's when you really go in there and fine, fine tune it. So if you, you can go back in there and set the, uh, set the cursor there and then go in there and click one of those and move those kind of like they need to. Like, there's a good example right there. Um, you can see I'm a little a little off right there on that edge. So in this case, you'd go in there and you'd pull that one down a little bit, and you'll see that that has created a brand new uh, key point right there. So back out and go full and play it out. And this is what that looks like. Oops, sorry, I didn't turn the mat on. There we go. Let's try this again. So that's that shot. Now, let's see. Next shot is something like this. Just a lot of fun. This image, that's the raw image. That's what it looks like straight out of the camera. Um, this had the same thing. I've got uh, a fast color corrector up here that's just set on the water. I've got another fast color corrector that is only for this area in the center that has the reflection of these reds from the trees. And then another fast color corrector that is the whole image. Okay. And then finally a sharpen. So let's start with this color corrector. This color corrector I said uh, to kind of get a, uh, the tone for the whole image. This is where I first, uh, again, I'll bring up the vector scope. Uh, if you look at the image without it, look at that. You don't have anything that's really good and you know, nice dark shadows, and you don't have any really bright highlights. Everything's dead center in the middle, and that's a good thing. Oops, let's say. Um, that's what you want. That's flat, you know, flat color. So now you can push it. So I go in here, turn this back on. And look, there we go. We get our darks close, closer down to zero, and our highlights up closer to that. I think in digital, uh, you can actually push highlights to, to around 110 uh, versus just you know 100 being the absolute limit. So that gives me this image. Then I decided I wanted to go in there, and uh, I wanted this water to have a much more deeper and richer uh, look to it. So I've, I've put a path on that, another mask that is uh, with a pen tool. I'm going to back out so you can see the whole thing. And you'll notice up here there are keyframes because it is a traveling mat as this thing moves. But it's subtle so I didn't have to have that many points in there. You can just kind of tug and move and tweak those and they will move to the corresponding spots in between each keyframe. So with that path on, that's what the water looks like. 
So I was able to go in, that's what's great about this, you're able to go in and actually just do color correction on a selective area. Because if I if I had done that to the whole image, it would have blown out the sky, or I'm sorry, it would have crushed the sky and, and, and uh, you wouldn't have all this uh, this beautiful highlights and this, these these really pretty like brights here on the horizon line as it, as the uh, sky goes into this bluer color. So you go from that to that, and then as I looked at the image, I thought Man, that looks pretty good. But I, I really love the hint of these these red tones that are that are kind of peeking through the water from these trees. So I wondered if I could pull those out. So what I did was went in there and just drew a big oval mask and heavily feathered that mask 151 pixels and then upped changed the uh, the white point or the, or the the white the hue of this color more toward the uh, oranges and yellows instead of center and what that gave me was that Let me turn that off so before after before after so play it back Oh, and of course, I sharpen everything just a little bit, 10% or 10 points. I don't even know what increments these are, but 10. I never, I, I rarely sharpen anything above 20. It just, it really starts to look, look uh, crispy, you know, doesn't look natural. Um, so back up and this is what that shot looks like. So. That's that one. The last one I'm going to do uh, here is uh, this shot with this uh, ominous looking green creek. This was a color study. Obviously, I wasn't trying to get, uh, get this to look real or natural. I, I was just going for the effect, see how vivid I could make this. But the, the other reason I wanted to show this one was because I used another technique had to use another technique uh, with this one to, to achieve this mask around all of this other stuff you know that would be incredibly complicated too complicated to hand draw a mask frame by frame that traveled around all this stuff so here's what the way I did that let's go up in the effects controls and I've got a three-way color corrector and I've got RGB curves that's what I've used on this image see yeah so the three-way is my overall color correction so that's that's without it that's you know as is <clears throat> excuse me let me turn that off there's the image untouched straight out of the camera flat the three-way now is on that gives me my tonal range you know again YC waveform before See, I don't have anything that's really hot and white other than right there in the image. And that is that hot spot. That's where the sun is reflecting. That's pure white, so you can't do much about that. But no true blacks either. Look at this. Everything's in the middle, but put that three-way on there, and boom. We get everything back down to the blacks. We got right up there with the whites. And you don't want to overdo these. I'll show you real quick. Um, this is an example of you've pushed it too far. I've got some of that going on here with the black. You can see that hard line, but you pushed it too far when you know you bury everything, and it's just cut off right here with this hot, hot green line. When this application is hot green, but same with the whites. You know, if you push it too far, you can see where it cuts off, and you're just burying everything. And what that does you're blowing out everything there's no detail left there's no you're killing the dynamic range in the shot so you pull back down and there's detail you can see things going on in the snow there same with the uh, with the shadows you know you can push it too far and you've lost everything in here you know you, you can't tell there's no detail left in there so so anyway, the uh, three color, three-way color corrector is for that tone range. And notice that in the shadows, the three-way color uh, corrector is great because you can selectively change the colors of shadows, midtones, and highlights as opposed to, like, say, the fast color corrector, which globally changes everything, whether it's highlights, shadows, or midtones. So the shadows here, I'm pushing them a little toward the blue. Same with the midtones, but I've left the highlights alone. 
Then the last thing uh, was uh, this guy. That's this beautiful, like, emerald green, or uh, depends on how you look at it, I guess, acid green, uh, toxic looking, maybe. Um, and I did that with... Down here, um, within the three uh, the RGB curves, and you can do this also in the three-way color corrector. When you first apply this effect to that clip, don't touch a thing. Come down underneath to secondary color corrector or correction. Click show mask. Okay. Now I've got a mask around this also, so the image is showing through here on the left and right. That's okay, you can don't worry about that. But I didn't want the correction I'm doing here to spill over into the sidewalk, because you know, it kind of was. Um, but you'll see what happens is you can come in here and then grab the eyedropper tool and come over here and select an area within that green. And it will then apply that as a mask. So you show your mask. Let me back up here. I've got some edge softening. See the white area? That's the areas it's finding, but it's really great because see it's going it's cutting around all of those shadows and the limbs of the trees that are that are leaning over the creek with their shadows. Uh, but you want to soften it a little bit and use some edge thinning, you see. You can really push those up. And that gives you the ability to kind of cut around all this stuff that's moving at the same time. That's that's called a uh, secondary color correction mask. Uh, and again, you do do that by using the eyedropper tool. You know, you select show the mask and you select your eyedropper tool, choose the, the color first, boom. Then come over and add to it, you know, grab the eyedropper tool with a plus, click it, and then select an area, you know, that's closer. And when you select the eyedropper tool plus, watch this, boom, I've selected it the image goes back so you can see maybe I should add that color there and it adds to it so you just keep doing that subtracting and adding so anyway the end result of that <clears throat> turn my mask off the end result of that ends up being the shot So that's it. Um, those are the three that I think um, have the most variety as far as what I what I had done for color correction. I hope um, I hope this uh, helps helps uh, you guys learn something new. And uh, like I said, please post comments, and uh, I'll do my best to answer questions uh, if I've not covered something or if, uh, if I've forgotten something uh, or made something unclear. Please let me know. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah.